Andrew Hawkins, I need you to tell me, what do you think is happening in the Indianapolis Colts locker room today? Um, what are the players thinking? What do you think is happening in that locker room today? <sighs> yes. There is, there is a, a, I'm positive, there is a, an overwhelming feeling of what the hell is going on. But like in a funny way. Like, cause you get to these, like I, I, when I was in Cleveland, we had some, you know, some, some seasons, we had some turmoil. This is mm -hmm. like the Johnny football years. Josh Gordon was going through some issues. Like we had some stuff and you, when these moments happen, you sit in these circles and you're trying to make sense of it all. And for a lot of the times you just can't do it. And this is one of those situations that they're like, well, how the heck are we going to listen to a coach who has no idea what's going on? He hasn't been in the locker room. And not that he doesn't know football, because Jeff Saturday, premium human being, yes. premium football mind, no incredible doubt. person, probably will be, if he wanted to, a successful head coach in short order. But just in the fashion that he came through of this, like, it takes so much to build this chemistry in this kind of locker room and to build a team. You coming in blank with, with kind of no prior visibility into all the mechanisms and, and inner workings, it's tough. We're all grown. This is like we're an NFL coach is not like a high school coach or a college coach. Well, by the way, I have to push back because Jeff Saturday just was a high school coach. He was. Two days ago. He was. Just yesterday morning, he woke up as a high school coach. And he was probably so. very successful, too. He was probably <laughs> incredible. But the thing about high school and college is, like, as a – you are the – authoritative figure yes right and we sometimes think oh that's the head coach of the nfl he's the authoritative figure yes he is but you're more like co-workers right like you're not the highest paid person in the locker room there's players that are the highest paid people in the locker room and we are like we opt into this relationship of what we want out of it and at some point if you don't feel like your co-workers whether that's in the front office ownership or whatever are putting that in it it does change the way you go about your business but it's jeff saturday it, does know that dynamic, right? Because he, he used to of be course. involved in that. The problem is, though, is the situation in which he's entering yes. is one that is uh, just on its face, even if Frank Reich was still there, a complete and total mess on the offensive side of the ball. And and I guess let me drill down a little deeper, Andrew Hawkins. What is it? What's what's it like to be in the wide receiver room? Yeah. Coming off of that game, no, they were 0 for 14 on mm -hmm. third downs. This this young man is still trying to figure things out. Yeah. And now there's no professional play caller in it, the system right now. Whoever is going to call the plays, it's his first ever play. The first offensive snap for the Colts in Las Vegas on Sunday will be called by somebody. That will be his first ever professional <sighs> play call. There's, there's, in the NFL. There's two people in this situation that I feel the worst for. Mm -hmm. One is just Saturday, right? Because I, I go to Dave & Buster's a lot with my kids, right? Okay. Arcades. Okay. And the whole point of Dave & Buster's, you play the game, you try to get as many tickets as possible. I don't like Dave & Buster's like 95% of the games because I have no control over winning. So what I do is I go play, there's one called like Kung Fu Panda, where you got to <laughs> hit it a certain amount of times. Yeah. But it literally is like how fast your hands are. And I feel good about my sure, ability to, 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 to rack up the tickets. The other <laughs> one is the quarterback one. We have to throw it in the holes that you get if you yep. beat the high score. Yes. And so I literally just play those two the entire time. And I <laughs> rack the tickets up because I can control it. Jeff Saturday is going into Dave and Buster's and there's no Kung Fu Panda. There's no quarterback <laughs> game for him. He doesn't even know these offensive plays. So he has to rely on the people that have been there, even just for terminology. Even if he wants to run a play, he has to say, "Hey, what do you guys call a, you know, what do you, what do you, what do you call a, a flat hitch here?" <laughs> oh, okay, that, yeah, call that play. So it's literally in somebody else's hands. So he's the first person I feel bad for because the the cards are stacked against him. Number two is Marcus Brady, who was the offensive coordinator there seven days ago, and they fired. He wasn't the play caller, but he got fired as the offensive coordinator when he wasn't calling the plays, and here we are six days later, the actual play caller and Frank Wright gets fired. And now there's nobody in the locker room who has the ability to call the plays. You know who would have been perfect for that? Marcus Brady. Marcus Brady. So in this situation, I think he's, he's the biggest loser right now in the situation. And then Jeff Saturday is number two because 
Not to say he won't be successful. Again, I love Jeff. I think Jeff Saturday is incredible. Mm -hmm. But the cards are stacked against them. So it's a tough situation to go into. And I, I, I find it fascinating that you you chose those two guys and not, say, uh, Michael Pittman Jr. Or, yeah. or, or Because these are the guys who, are, who, who want to ball out. Yeah, and of course. have the ability to Alec Pierce is a rookie. He must be looking around saying, man, that was great on Cincinnati last year. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, just looking around, just wondering how does this work? And Jonathan Taylor is hurt. The offensive line has been dreadful all yep. season long. This just has it. Uh, there's really no words for it. I've never heard of anything close to this before. It's you crazy. Know? It really, I mean, it's, it's, it's crazy. I feel like I'm a little bit in the twilight zone. Um, you know, and, and to your point, even about the Jeff Saturday thing, I had to go through this with um, Josh McCown, right? What, what do you Josh mean? McCown is one of my dearest, closest friends ever. He is salt of the earth. If he ran for president today, I would vote for him. Incredible football mind. Mm -hmm. I've never met someone who's played with him who doesn't love him, understands the locker room, understands the dynamics. I think he will be an extremely successful head coach. Last year, when they were having the talks about him going straight from player to the Texans, there was like this, you know, again, we understand it. You become the face of um, privilege, right? Like mm -hmm. there's a process, there's people in the waiting, and yes, there are. And so you're stuck. Because I think he's going to be a great coach. But then there's the process. Jeff Saturday is a little bit of the same thing that I feel people literally fighting for their lives on because you know him and you're like, yeah, he will be a great head coach. He has all the makings. But he completely circumvented the process. And honestly, even if he is good, the situation, the conversation, all these things will play in to his eventual failure or success because now you're dealing with factors outside that you didn't consider when you were thinking about one day possibly getting the opportunity. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern for free.